The original Aka R was an arcade game that was made by Atari but never actually released. And there were only about three cabinets ever made. I think the only known one at the time was in the hands of a particular collector and he didn't want anybody to copy the ROMs so that you could play it in emulators. He wanted to keep it to himself. But a friend of his, the legend goes, this guy actually managed to take the ROMs out of this game, sneakily copy them and then put them back again. And so this game, which most people had never even seen, suddenly was available and having heard about this game over the years as being this mythical, legendary thing I'd never seen, I thought oh, maybe that would be an interesting game to try and update it, because I like the style. For me, the design process isn't something you do at the start and then code to a spec. It's something which evolves continuously as you're making the thing. So it's an iterative process, and a process of evolution. From the original version, we've kept the, the geometric shape of the platforms. It's not an arcade game. I'm not trying to throw you off every three minutes to get you, put an, to get you to put another coin in the slot. So I can make it a bit more of a relaxed pace. I've made it a bit more asymmetric. I've made the bulk of the, blade, the gameplay occur upstairs when the thing's attacking on the top layer and meshing with the shape and behavior of the geometry. I didn't quite know what kind of music I was going to put into it and then one day I decided I'd like to have some kind of semi-generative stuff going on in there. It was like a tonal sequence which is generated by the enemies and by your actions as you shoot the enemies which gives each level a kind of distinctive feel. Less is more really and I toned down the sound effects a bit and I found some old voice samples of this lady saying various things. And that's quite a distinctive part of the game now. Sonically, it ended up in quite a different place than it was when I first started. In fact, you could say the same for the, for the whole game. There was a lot of evolution and dead ends before it ended up where it should be. It took me a long time to find the set of things which work together to make a satisfying game. In the original arcade game, you know, there was a notion of a shield, but you didn't really know how much shield you had left, and it was just, you know, after a while being attacked, you would die. This gives you a much more definite indication, oh, I've only got three pods left, I'd better be careful. Uh, it's a, it, it makes it a bit more obvious what, what it is you're defending. My main inspiration has always been the games of, uh, the arcade games of Eugene Jarvis. He did arcade games, classic arcade games like Defender and Robotron. Um, his style was very much like mine, or well, my style is very much like his, I should say, because basically I'm, I'm heavily influenced by him, but he has the same kind of shattering explosions and gameplay which is spectacular but also difficult and it's just a particular arcade game style which I absolutely love and admire and is, is at the root of everything I've done.